Next news, Children of Islamic State fighter Khaled Sharaf want to return to Australia. They're children. Let them back. Go on. Yeah. The orphaned kids of Islamic State's Khaled Sharaf are desperate to come home five years after they were dragged to Syria by their parents. Zainab, 17, Hoda, 15, and Hazma, 8, are stuck living in a filthy tent in the Al-Hal refugee camp in northern Syria. After their parents and two oldest brothers died, they're desperate to come home. The teenager is almost seven and a half months pregnant with her third oh, child. Shit. Now, most of the adults in her life are dead. The kid's grandmother, Karen Net. Nettleton is working to get them back to Australia. So if you guys are wondering how this girl is, you know, 15 pregnant uh, so many times, her father married her off when she was 13 years old. Wait, um, are they Australian? Um, most of their family, yes. They they lived in Australia and then they were drug off to Syria. Yeah, but are they Australian citizens? That I don't know. Well, okay, but, okay, but if they are Australian citizens, why are they already not back? Like... Well, the Who's grandmother is an Australian citizen, right? The grandmother has always been in Australia, um, and she wants her grandchildren back with her. So I don't understand why yes. she can't. Yeah, so what is even, like, is, do we even need a debate on these? They're, they're children. Like, why right. are they, who's stopping them from coming back in? Just get on the next plane. <sighs> um, you know, I think that that might have to do something with the fact that, you know, the, the oldest daughter here is pregnant. With her third, and she was married off, and she was thirteen years old too, an ISIS fighter. So what? So, she was thirteen. Uh, hmm. So what? She was thirteen. Like right. I I understand. I'm you know, just sure like she... there are a lot of girls that run away because um, they think that this is going to be a good idea. But this... she was forced into this. Yeah, and, like, I mean, she's thirteen. They had the choice. Yeah. So I don't understand why she's being treated in the exact same way. Um, I mean, is anybody make t like saying that this shouldn't become like who is anybody even pushing back against this? Like, I don't even understand. What would do? Well, they've tried be? twice to go home, traveling to Turkey in 2016 and 18. Um, so they they've tried getting out of Syria twice, um, and then when they try to get to there, right now the government is trying to get them out of Syria into Good. the Australian embassy. Okay, so the issue is just a logistical problem. There's nobody, like, Australia is not like, no, we're not letting you back in. The government is actually trying to get them back, right? Right. So good. No no problem. Get the, get these get these poor kids out of there. Like, she's already, so, like, she's a kid and she's already had three, three kids? Three kids. Well, and, and they talk, they talk more about this, this tent that they're forced to live in. People get raped and tortured. Oof. Um you know, where they're living is terrible. And these are just children. Their parents died. So if you guys are wondering, I'm not sure if I said that earlier, but their parents died and so did two of their elder siblings. So these three, the three younger children have been stuck in this tent, um, trying everything they can to get out of there and get back to their grandma. Some people are complaining that I'm not answering the questions. For you to, for me to read your que uh, questions, you need to actually mention Atheist Republic because then I don't know if you're talking to us or you're just talking among yourself. So if you notice the comments I'm reading are the ones that mentions Atheist Republic in it, okay? Because I can't, there's so many things, there's so many different live chats going on. I need to be able, I, I, I can't keep uh, an eye on everything. But yeah, so let me see what the top comment says. Ryan is saying, hope things work out for them. They did nothing wrong. I personally think they should be brought back to Australia and given full therapy and rehabilitation. Rehab, rehabilitation. <laughs> rehab, for sure. Jesus, I can't talk right now. But yeah, I agree. With I'm, I'm pretty sure they've seen a lot of fucked up stuff. They should be fine if they have lived in the Middle East this long and then moved to Australia. They will see their clear improvement in quality of life and likely want nothing to do with anything that opposes it yeah well, but she understands you know she she ends this they end this whole article with her saying don't i have the right to a normal life look they get it like yeah they no, know they're like Australia yeah this, this is fucked up it. but I, I just want to clarify one thing it's not that they lived in the middle east because i'm pretty sure you could live in the middle east and have a very comfy uh, life and sometimes you can live a much comfier life than in many places in the United States and Europe. It's not that they lived in the Middle East. They lived under ISIS, okay? Like this is this is not a, the nightmare that they went through 
is a nightmare for people that live in the Middle East, right? Like, it's not like... Oh, if you live in the Middle East, the, the people just come and you know rape you and torture you, and they just sell you off to the next person once your husband dies. Like it, that's even not normal, even for Middle Eastern standards. Okay, the the people living under ISIS, that's a nightmare for most people, and the 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 lifestyle that these girls had, people in the Middle East find that a nightmare scenario. Okay. So well, and also another point to this was these children when they left their mother took them lying to them tell them telling them that they were just going to go visit their father who was in Turkey at the time. So the children left and they ended up in Syria in the middle of this, you know, war-torn situation. So it's yeah. um you know they they've been lied to, they've been abused there i mean even if they weren't okay so these girls they were forced they were lied to they were you know to you know they were not told the truth to they were married were, off and they raped. were married off and raped oh my fucking but even if they were like yeah i'm gonna go to syria right i'm gonna go to isis they're, they're 13 i mean come on right what do they know but they these kids didn't even say that they're like yeah they stole us and they raped us can you come home now like of course <laughs> of course i know Right, I'm. I'm. So the comment section has been pretty good on this. Actually, everybody supports these kids so far. The top comments uh, seem to support them coming back. Uh, Alif is saying these these are just kids. They shouldn't be blamed for the actions of their parents. They didn't choose to go there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Irma is saying I don't believe they will ever be normal. I f yeah. Um, I don't know if okay. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I'm. Se they have seen a lot of fucked up shit. Dylan is saying, nope, goodbye. Okay, one comment here. So Dylan is not a, probably an atheist, but definitely not a humanist. Uh, Rex is saying, let them eat bacons and pork chops first before readmission. Oh, fuck off, Rex. Go Seriously. Off. Jesus Christ. Uh, Andy is saying, they will never be normal as long as the book of religion. Uh, this is not about that. Okay, they're just kids. kids. They just won't kids. Go just shut up about all that. Right. Uh, too fucking bad and good riddance. Oh fuck off. Good thing that thing too fucking bad. Actually, no, too fucking bad for you because apparently Australia is trying to get them back in. Okay, so the toxic comments are actually a little bit lower. So here they are. David saying, "Not a fat chance. Not welcome." Sorry, David. They're coming back in. Go fuck yourself. Mike is saying, "Good riddance." Uh, too bad rubbish. No, Mike, you're bad rubbish. So fuck you. Um, Amanda saying give these children asylum in Australia they don't need us I mean thank you Amanda for saying that but they don't need asylum it's that's their home they just need to go home <laughs> they just need to go home um, okay so there's a mixed bag but the top ones were good the top comments were good um, okay so that was our last news uh, Godless is saying Godless he is saying we're having an election in May this is Optics for the far right. Oh, really? So, oh, so the far right maybe is using this. Yeah. Okay. Well, let them let them show their true colors. Anyways, thank you, everyone. Sorry for some of the toxic comments, but they need to be highlighted. Um, Ocean is saying Facebook is accessible. No, it's not uh, Ocean. It's humanity. Okay, this is Facebook and Twitter. A lot of people think like it's accessible. No. It's just exposing what many people believe in. This, If it wasn't for Facebook, people would still believe these things. Thanks to Facebook, we get to see what big of a problem we have on our hands, right? These things need, we need to see these kind of comments so that we can, we know that we have to deal with them. Mark is saying, I don't think it's Australia stopping them from coming back. It's a travel issue or something. Could they maybe approach the embassy over there? Yeah, I thought so too, Mark. I, I said that it might be a logistical problem rather than Australia. It stopping. is a logistical problem. And they, they're actually even trying to, the, the grandmother has even said that she hopes that what, what can happen here is they can get them over here and immediately to the Australian embassy. So um, if they can't come over for whatever their this logistical reason is, mm. uh, she at least hopes that they can find a safe haven there. Yeah, Australia has been slow in responding to some of these things in the past, so I hope they make it up right here. Uh, Ocean is saying, true enough. Mars is saying, Armin, Ali, thanks for bringing this stuff 
and other news to our attention. It's depressing, but people need to know about this. Oh, thank you, Mars. We'll try. Thanks, it. Mars. Thank you, thank you. Anyways, love you all. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for disagreeing with us or correcting us. We really appreciate the live chat. Honestly, like the amount of uh, information that we get from our live chat really makes um, all of this experience a lot better. Like we get, we have such an international audience, and every single single news that we have, we have different people from different. Uh, parts of the world giving their commentary from the ground so it makes this whole experience a lot a, a lot better so thank you for people in the live chat for, for for all your comments atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening let's make it difficult for them to ignore us we have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.